morning, everyone, and welcome to the Blender Conference. Thank you very much for attending my talk. I hope you learn a lot and get to know more about my work. And this is the first, the first Blender Conference I attend, and I want to thank the organizers for contacting me and inviting me to the event. To begin with, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Nicole, but everyone knows me as Nikki Blender in social media. And I'm a 22-year-old girl who was born in Venezuela, but my mother is from Spain and my father is from Italy. And I've been living in Spain since I was two years, two years old. And now I'm dedicating to 3D modeling and creating cosy and cute scenes. And a few months I finished my university degree. And many people ask me how I started, how long I started, and where did my interest in Blender come from? So, well, today I'm going to solve those questions so you can know me better. About five years ago, when I was in high school, I decided to choose an elective subject who was related to computer science and everything that had to do with computer programs. And it was in that subject that I discovered Blender, thanks to a teacher that taught us the the program and to whom I have a special affection with him because he discovered me the program with which I work every day. And when he taught us the model that people made with Blender, I fell in love because I dream about making models like that someday, but my skills weren't so good. And when I started at the university, I forgot about it and didn't open the program again until the, th year, the third year of the career. But when that year arrived, uh, I thought that the teacher taught us um, how to use Blender in the artistic way, but it wasn't so. They only taught us how to program in Blender. And it was in that moment that I decided to learn on my own. And that's why I created my Instagram account on 2020. Until today, I created scenes totally different from the ones that I created when I started. And now I'm going to show you some on my evolution in my models. To begin with, I would like to show you this one. This one was um, one of my first models. It was made by me uh, for a university project. And now I create cosy scenes like this one. And I have started to make isometric scenes with buildings like this one. And now I create cosy rooms like this. And to finish with, I want to show you my food evolution. This model belongs to an uh, island model that I made a few years ago, and now I create scenes like this. Leaving behind the introductions, I'm going to start explaining something that many people ask me, and that's how to start in Blender. So it's a question that is repeated a lot in my social media, and today I want to answer this. Most of the people I know, both in my, page, in my personal life and as my followers, start modeling in Blender with YouTube tutorials. And for this and other reasons, I decided to create my YouTube channel. And when I started modeling, uh, sometimes I felt very sad because I didn't see any progress in my models or any quality. Uh, but I never gave up, and that's why I want to explain my beginnings. I started a little different. I was unable to follow any tutorials because I ended up getting tired of following them, I stopped the video, and having repeat the process again and again, and that's frustrating me a lot. But uh, I decided to try things on my own, and when I started, I didn't have any any um, style defined, but uh, most of the time I didn't get the model that I imagined. But with daily work, I've achieved a style that I feel very comfortable with. And my advice to all those who are studying is uh, to do what you feel most comfortable with and do it with your heart. And make a list of goals with what you want to achieve and work every day because consistency builds good artists. And there are a thousand and one ways to, 
to get into 3D modeling, you can look for certified online courses, follow YouTube tutorials, and there are also university degrees or masters about 3D modeling and texturing, or do as I did and learn by researching with the program, try commands and see what you can build. And I also want you to never delay those words that you dislike because as time goes by, you will see the evolution and you will be amazed, I promise you. Now I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use uh, to create my scenes. I'm going to start with some of the modifiers that I use the most. And now I'm going to open Blender to show you how I, how I model this cute, lovely potion. So, come on. I always start with a cube and I apply the subdivision modifier by pressing Ctrl 2 key and then I apply it. And now I'm going to select the top of the part of that cube. And, ah, oh. how can I share Blender in the, in the projector? Oh. It doesn't work, ah. Oh. Can someone help me, please? Uh, mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> but now I can see Blender in <laughs> um, duplicate. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> okay. Uh, I always start with a cube, and then I apply the subdivision modifier. And then I'm going to change this part to a circle with the loop tool add-on, and I'm going to select circle. And then I'm going to extrude several times to make the top of the potion. I'm going to scale this part to zero to make it flat. And now I'm going to uh, insert a face, and then I'm going to model the inside of the potion. I'm going to apply again the subdivision modifier so you can see the software and software appearance. And now I'm going to make some loop cuts and shade is smooth. And now I'm going to model the liquid of the potion. I'm going to copy the inside of it and fill it by pressing the F key and insert a new face on the top of the liquid. And to finish with the modeling process, I'm going to model the cup of the bottle, copying the, part, the upper part of the potion. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face, extrude it, scale it, and add in a loop cut. And I'm going to add a solidify modifier to the bottle, so you, when I apply the glass material, you can see better the inside of the potion. And now I'm going to add the materials. <coughs> the first one I'm going to add is the glass material. I'm, I'm going to lower the roughness of it, and I'm going to select the liquid and change to a red material. And I'm going to show you how I made the boot texture of the cup I'm going to go to the shading tab and add in a new material. I'm going to add a color RAM node that I'm going to join to the base color. And for the wood texture, I'm going to add a bump node that I'm going to join to the normal. And after that, I'm going to use a nice texture and I'm going to join to this one and to the height of the bump. And now I'm going to add a mask grape texture. And to finish with this, I am going to press Ctrl T to add these two nodes, and I'm going to add a new color in the color ramp, and I'm going to change the colors to a more brown tones. And now I'm going to change these parameters to get um, a more cute wood material. And that's it. We have a cute, lovely potion. And I'm... <laughs> and now 
now I'm going to return to the slides so you can see more better the, the continue of the presentation. Um, <clears throat> a fundamental pillar in any scene is the lighting. Uh, you can have a spectacular scene built, but if you illuminate it badly, it can be a complete disaster. And I want to put you this example. In this render, there is only uh, have a fairly harsh uh, sun type lighting and with hard shadows. And in this render, we have a sun type light with softer shadows and several area type light illuminating. And now I'm going to show you how to illuminate a scene to make it look cosier. So I'm going again to the to the blender, to blender, and as you can see, there is only um, the sun type light. I am going to modify the angle to make the the shadow softer, and now I'm going to change the tone to a warm tone, and I'm going to add a area type light in the middle of the of the scene. I'm going to change the power. I change to a warm tone too. And I'm going to copy this, this area type light and, pla and place it near of the window. I'm going to higher the power and change the color a little bit. And now I'm going to add some spheres with an emission material near the window. I'm going to change the color to an emission. And change the strength to 10. And I'm going to copy this sphere several times. And I'm going to add more near the lantern. And to finish with the lighting, I'm going to add a point light inside the lantern. And that's all. You can, <laughs> you can see the difference between the first render that we have and this one. And I'm, I'm going to return to the slides again. And let's move on to the next point. How to build a cozy and cute scene? The first thing I want to emphasize is the correct use of colors. A good choice of colors makes a model look amazing. And as an example, I put this lovely cozy bakery kitchen I made a few weeks ago. I decided to put warm and brown tones in the scene, and this was the result. Leaving aside the colors, I'm going to talk about choosing the right elements to model depending on the type of the scene. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. Look at this corner. It's, uh, it's so empty, but let's add some pumpkins. Now it's look fuller, but there's still some holes to fill it. Uh, I'm going to add some candles. Now it looks more better, but I'm going to to put more details on it. So what about prepare some coffee cups with some pieces of cakes? Well, it looked much better. But I'm going to add more details. OK, so that's it. Uh, with this, I, I, want to, I want that you see the importance of, of choosing good details uh, to fill the scene. Now that you've seen this uh, scene, I am going to teach you how to model it in Blender. So I'm going again 
to this one. And I'm going to start uh, modeling the, the little pumpkins that you see in some of the of this places of the scene. I start, I'm going to start with a cube, apply the subdivision modifier, and I go into edit mode, and I'm going to scale it, and adding some loop cuts. And now I'm going to add the mirror modifier, and I'm going to duplicate it several times. I'm going to select all the pieces and I'm going to scale it. I'm going to do now the upper part of the, of the pumpkin with a circle. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face and extrude it several times. And I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier. And I'm going to use this tool that I use a lot. And now I'm going to place it into the top of the pumpkin. And I'm going to place the pumpkin into one of the chairs. And now I'm going to add other detail. I'm going to use a curve to make this. And now I'm going to extrude it several times. And change the tip of the curve and I'm going to change the side of one of the segments. I'm going to place it in the correct place and I'm going to add another detail. And now I'm copying this cute pumpkin and I'm going to duplicate it several times. I'm going to put some of them in the table. And now I'm going to show how I model the cute coffee cups. I'm going to start with a sphere. I'm going to change the, the mesh a little bit. And I'm going to delay the half of the, of the model. And I'm going to modify it a little bit. Now I'm going to do this cute detail by bevel one of the vertices. And now I'm going to delay this. I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier and the solidify. 
and I'm going to use the tool that I used a few minutes ago. And now I'm going to shade the smooth, change a little bit the thickness of the solidify modifier, and I'm going to model the, the coffee of the, of the cup. I'm going to copy this and separate it by loose parts and I'm going to fill it, insert a new face. And now I'm going to show you how I model this part of the cup. I'm going to use a plane. I'm going to scale it and extrude this, apply the subdivision surface modifier, add a loop cut, and move this. And I'm going to add the solidify modifier again. And now I'm going to place it in the cup. And now I'm going to move the cup and copy it in the other part of the table. And now I'm going to make some candles. I am going to use a circle. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face, extrude it, add a loop cut, and apply the subdivision surface modifier. And with the top of the candle, I'm going to do this part of the model. I'm going to scale it a little bit and shade it smooth, and now I'm going to copy it into several parts of the, of the table. I'm going to scale it to have more than one size of candles. I'm going to select this and copy this one in this part. going to scale it and place it in the correct place. And now I make some drops of coffee with a cube. I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier and then I'm going to scale it into the set axis and I'm going to make a loop cut and put in that place. I'm going to scale the top of the cube and move in the set axis and now I'm going to shade it smooth, put in the table, scale it and copy. And now I'm going to model this cute piece of cake. I am going to use a circle again. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face, and extrude several times. And now, with a cube, I'm going to model the piece of cake, applying the subdivision surface modifier again, and adding some loop cuts. And now I'm going to model the upper part of the cake. I'm going to use a cube, apply a subdivision surface modifier. And now I'm going to move several of its vertices. I'm going to apply again the division surface. I'm 
I'm going to scale it. And now I'm going to shade this more. And I'm going to make the cream. I'm going to change the vertices to 8. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to fill it, extrude it, and rotate the upper part. I'm going to add a loop cut, and I'm going to scale it, select the lower part and scale it, scale this too. I'm going to select some of the edges of these and I'm going to bevel oops and now I'm going to scale it and apply the subdivision surface modifier And now I'm going to copy all the piece of cake and put it in the other side of the table. I'm going to scale it a little bit to have a different size of this piece of cake. And now I'm going to model the center of the table. I'm going to use a circle again. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face. I'm going to bevel this Eight, and I'm going to extrude this several times. I'm going to make a loop cut and move this vertex. I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to make a hole in this part. I'm going to transfer to a circle and delay the faces. And now I'm going to select all of these edges and change this value. I'm going to extrude it and apply a loop cut. And then I'm going to shade this smooth. The hole is so big, so I may, I'm going to make it a little... Oh, okay. And now I'm going to model the food of this detail. I'm going to use a cube with a, a sort of division surface modifier. And I'm going to copy it several times and places in different locations. And now I'm going to model these cute cookies. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face, and apply the subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to extrude it, and I'm going to select these faces and extrude by individual faces. And now I'm going to insert a face, shade it smooth and apply a loop cut. You can make the cookie with this, with this form or apply more, more vertices like this. I'm going to select the upper part, extrude individual faces, apply the subdivision surface, insert a new face and shade smooth. I'm going to add the loop cut and I'm going to model the jam of the, of the cookie with a cube. I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier and move some 
of the vertices. And now I'm going to put in this place one cookie here and the other one here. And I'm going to make the bottle of milk that you can see here. I'm going to use a circle, fill it, insert a new face and extrude it several times. And now I'm going to model the inside of the bottle. I'm going to apply the subdivision surface modifier and add some loop cuts. Go into shade smooth and add the milk. And I'm going to copy this and fill it and select the upper and the lower part of the milk and insert a new face and place it. Go into scale it and put it behind one of the one cup of coffee. And now I'm going to model this last detail. I'm going to start with the, the jump. I'm going to use a circle. Now I'm going to add the food inside, insert a new face, and shade smooth. I'm going to scale it, and I'm going to add the upper part of the bottle. I'm going to fill it, insert a new face, select these edges, and extrude it. Now I'm going to add the solidify modifier. And I'm going to apply it, select this part, and extrude by individual faces. I'm going to scale it and add this. I'm going to scale it a little more and put it in this part of the table. And now I'm going to model the last detail of this cute cozy little table. I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to delay the half of the model. I'm going to apply this one. And then I'm going to use the solidify modifier again and the control and the subdivision surface modifier. And now I'm going to select these two edges and extrude it several times. I'm going to add a new faces here and change to a circle and delete the faces. I'm going to scale it a little bit, select all these edges and change this value. And now I'm going to rotate this part of the model. Going to scale it and move this part. And to finish with it, I'm going to add a drop inside it. And that's all. We have a cozy little table with many details. And now I'm going to, to return to the 
to the slides because I'm going to reveal um, this characteristic element of my models. Um, this, these are the pile of leaves and here you have the process of how I make the pile of leaves of m all of my COSI models. I use a particle system. Uh, I add the particle system to the cube and I change several of the parameters and in the part of the render, I render as an object and select the leaf I modeled before. And now you are going to see the fast motion process of how I model a pile, pile of leaves falling. I add this detail in all of my causes scenes because when a corner is empty, I add this one and the space look more cosier. I am going to reveal some secrets so that you can build a cell like mine. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about two terms that are very important for me. The first one is called clutter core, and you can see some of the examples that uh, I found on Pinterest. Um, clutter core is a trend that could be defined as the rejection of minimalism, and this trend consists uh, of a blaze being overloaded uh, but with sense, that is to say, to achieve an organized chaos. In my models, these trends abound, and these trends go hand in hand with this another one that is called cottage core, a trend that celebrates the return to traditional traits and skills such as harvesting wild food and baking. And <clears throat> also stall the disconnection and union with the rural world and enjoy the little things and simple things of, of the life. And after learning these two trends, I started to fill all of my cozy spaces with many details. And I want to put a um, comparison between two of my models. This one, I, I've, I made this one in 2021, and now I make model like this one. Uh, there's only... Um, a one year of difference. And I always start by building the shape of the room. I, li I like to add many details, as you can see in this process. Uh, I add many pumpkins, mushrooms, uh, little details, many type of foods. And I love to add cute animals, like frogs, little bees mouse or um, cute kitties. And I also add butterflies if the model <laughs> is so cozy for me. And I, um, I love to add giant mushroom at the scenes, but if, I, um, if the scene is full of pumpkins, I add those, the, those details. And as a last point, I would like to talk about something is very important for me, that, that is the social media. That's how I became known and people got to know my work. As I mentioned at the beginning, I started creating my Instagram account and I post my models on the social networks and in Twitter too. And I wanted to give you some tips uh, so you can grow in social media. The first one is to have a brand image or a logo or render that identifies you. Um, the second one is build a style that defines you, that people recognize you when they see your scenes or your illustrations. Uh, the other one is um, build a community, support, support each other, sharing the art that you like, because support artists is so important for us. And to conclude with these tips, don't forget the consistency and be aware of the trends. For example, now are booming the, um, the reels on Instagram. So um, work daily and do it with your heart and love. That's so important. And regarding the portfolio, uh, you can build your own website or make a portfolio on our station, Behance, or webs like that. In my case, I have my own website with the models that I've made, and I also um, I also put information about 
mm, the information of my models if someone wants to make a commission or contact details, information about me so people can know me better. And to conclude my talk, I want to thank you all again for attending. And it has been an honor to teach you my tips and reveal the secrets to build a sense like mine. And if you like my work, don't forget to follow me in social networks. And if you want to learn a little more, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel that is called Nikki Blender 2. And now I'm also preparing a series of modeling courses that I will put on sale before the end of the year, and I will announce it in my social network, so don't forget to follow me there. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and enjoy the next talks, and I hope you have a wonderful day.